Hey guys, uh, Rob McLennan here, doing another blog post here. Uh, there's going to be two of them coming up tonight. One's going to be my Week 17 of the NFL preview, uh, which I already kind of talked about, but a more in-depth one. And then t this one is actually a Turf Paradise Monday, Tuesday little preview. This won't be very long. Uh, probably Monday, I will post a Laurel Pick 5 with the mandatory payout uh, information with a little preview that one won't take too long either it's just that will be like a $250,000 pool with a lot of that dead money in a track that's sometimes very profitable looking at the Turf Paradise card for Monday and Tuesday they don't run Sunday tomorrow the first on Monday is the Honest Mac $7,800 quarter horse is going a thousand yards uh, incredibly tough field for $7,800 uh, I don't like anybody other than just Meteor with all the speed um, I don't like especially strings on the dock. I think it's actually tougher than he has been facing, and I hate the ten hole going a thousand yards. Obviously, I'm predispositioned to like Blind Magic. Um, think that he's had some time off, which is gonna be really good for him. He's got a couple of bullet works coming in. If he gets six to one, I'm gonna be all over that. But other than that, Fenway will be close early. Um, Love in the limelight and Brady Blue Eyes might close for a piece. But uh, Blind Magic and Just Media are the two for me in there. Uh, the second, I like No Team Spirit as a normal horse, but uh, he's probably not actually worth eight grand. Adrian Moon is, but he looked really bad coming down the lane last time, even though he did win. So maybe if those two don't fire, you can get somebody like Kuro to win for Fulmer on the drop. Uh, but I don't see this being too crazy a race. Champsville Battle School just don't do enough for me. The third, uh, Reasonable Effects, is probably your most likely winner uh, for the Silver Barn, but you also got to have. Big Alley and one to remember. I think those three covered up. If you just want to go Silva Diodoro with reasonable effects in Big Alley, I think you're safe there too. Uh, the fourth race, non three lifers. I've always liked Indy Racer. Uh, I remember he had a horrible trip last year at one point. And he's just always a horse that seems to find his way into trouble. I know he's coming off a good effort, so if he can run back to that, he could be worth it at a price. And the other two I wanted to look at here just were uh, honestly. Ossifer, honestly Ossifer from the rail, uh, Karino Krilljack, you know, a big price for a horse that has kind of a kind of an in and out performance record, maybe uh, six and a half is what he wants, then the other one is obviously the favorite is Pull a Train, um, have to respect him, but uh, I kind of think Indy Race is kind of an interesting one, even though he's been a turf horse a lot. Um, the fifth, I said I wanted to play conventional. Um, but I don't, I can't here, this is just way too tough of a spot. After his last race, I said, well, Conventional's going to run way better, second off the layoff. He needs more ground than 5 eights. Um, I hate Lewiston. Um, Moses on the Mesa goes back to my first race of the year last year, Turf Paradise, where he runs second. Bro Derrick's probably not a $5,000 dirt horse. So maybe I end up with Wise Boss in there, maybe you end up with Get Zooks. Um, I would even talk about Silk Indian. So... Not sure what I really like in there, but uh, Good Zooks is probably going to be the one with Wise Boss. Um, in a kind of a wide open race in the fifth. The sixth uh, is the non twos. Hugo Pirates probably going to be the choice for me in there. Uh, Harry the Book is the other one, so that's the seven and eight on the outside there. I really don't like Mitch's Halo. Um, spiteful Ways, I think, has had his chance. Um, obviously San Giuseppe and the likes are kind of the bottom feeders, but Hugo Pirates worth a little bit of a shot. Uh, the seventh, the non-twos. Um, I thought Cabello Little should have ran way better last time. I like these secrets. I thought she, two back, ran a really good race. Uh, that kind of visually impressed me. And then coming back, uh, I think she's got a shot. And Swiss Laker Girl was supposed to be a better horse than this, I think, as well. So I'm going to go to those two with V Secrets and Swiss Laker Girl. Nothing crazy in terms of prices, but a little bit of a shot there. The eighth, the Maiden Claimers. Uh, I kind of thought that this was a race that was going to get blown up. Uh, Fascinating Dixie is kind of interesting to me, even though I don't know what a C Salcedo is. He had five pounds. Chad Starr's had a good meet. Um, Baby's Corner from the outside. And... Uh, maybe even Cat's Reality Star for Sandy Gann. This is a race that I just wanted to try to stay away from the Vaughn's Dixie Melody, but not quite sure what else to go to in here. The ninth, I always thought my Johnny Cash was a better horse than this, um, so maybe he's going to turn around and you're going to get a big price in that. But incisive, incisive five rolled down in the two hole, is probably the horse to beat, but I uh, would definitely not throw out my Johnny Cash just because I think he was better at one point. Uh, and the 10th is just a maiden 
bottoms going five eighths. I would just go to the speed, but I spotted Al's a little scary because he does draw the twelve hole. French chocolate again. You get Curl Jack with the two favorites, and Mr. Bob I, Akafumi Kato does nothing for me. That just leaves me with Stefan's Pride and uh, the two Curl Jacks and a right foot again. I haven't really got an interesting opinion. Moving on to Tuesday's New Year's Eve card. First race is Maidens. You've got um, Silver on the outside. Going 870, and I think you uh, have to use Rootin, Hooten, Ernie for Kerouac and French down on the rail. Maybe the five row gelding finally gets it done. The second uh, is the 12 fives on the turf, or 12 fives on the dirt going a mile. I think Chisnow is a turf horse. I think Claypool is going way too far. Um, I don't really like Salado Tribe, and I don't like Free Beer, so it's kind of where's the remote and arraignment and mint humor for me. Are kind of my three there, making here being a little bit of the price. Third race is a mile again. Tobias Journey, if he wires them, he can, but again, I don't think this is his best spot. Um, I'd be more inclined to look at a horse like Canel Grande or maybe even Fat Cat Diplomat, but uh, it's not really that interesting of a betting race. The fourth, I really think that Bettina's Rose improved, second off the layoff. She definitely needed the last start, according to connections, and I think this is a very similar bunch to what you just saw. Um, our Henny Penny was always kind of one I liked too, for the Jonathan Nance Barn. Fifth race, um, Snow Me the Money for Hartman. She's got kind of an interesting form coming. Uh, she was a Hartman, or yeah, she was a Hartman horse in Oklahoma too, in Texas. And I think she's got some form where she, if she's not too, too uh, injury riddled, that she could be talented enough to win this. I also kind of thought that uh, always red on Sundays, uh, a three-year-old that might be just uh, improving enough. So those would be the two in there for me. Uh, the sixth, I've always tried to get Cool Toddy home for the last little while. It hasn't got the job done. You get Silver with the other half of the entry, Capilete, on the rail. Uh, it's hard to bet a six-year-old non-two, though. So I like Cool Toddy, and I guess I have to use uh, maybe Nazzy on the outside. Uh, I don't know, maybe Babs and Marty. I can... But Cool Toddy's the pick for me in there. The seventh uh, is the mile. Uh, this is an interesting race with miscommunication. Uh, definitely think that she's getting closer. We've Sweet Summer Wine's been better than these before. Um, but I think that truly unusual. The Calibred uh, is kind of the interesting one for me. Obviously, miscommunication is the horse to beat, though. Uh, the eighth is the allowance other than better be lucky is going to be really tough for Lucarelli. That's probably my pick in there. Um, I just don't see anybody else being that much. Yeah, better be lucky is definitely the pick there. Uh, the ninth is the Crybotch, the mile stake, the mile sixteenth stake. We used to be the last chance Derby. Remember how impressive AZ Ridge was in this start last this race last year, uh, holding on and he's turned into a very very nice racehorse. Um, in this spot, Red Zeus is probably your logical one, but I'd like to, actually I'd like to get away from Red Zeus and Mark, maybe taking a shot on, uh, on the key, maybe, maybe even Stone Ridge Gold, I think the BC horses are generally pretty tough in here, maybe that leads me to Mark, but on the key for Tracy and Stone Ridge Gold, maybe to get a bit of an upset, and the 10th, the last race of 2013 at Turf Paradise, I think Jim's success for Brinker off on the outside, but you also got the Silva entry down on the rail, and that's probably where you end up going. I definitely do not like Misguided Missile. She just can't get the job done. But shamefully, shamefully sinful um, to go along with uh, Jim's success. All right, my two picks to end off that uh, card on New Year's Eve. That's it for me for Turf Bright Isaac. I'll be back. Uh, we'll check out the football one, obviously, but also have the Laurel Pick 5 coming up probably two Monday night. Um, good luck, and enjoy the cards at Turf Paradise, and I'll see you back for that in the new year. Have a good night, everybody.